<laughs> right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, those who are not seated, if you'd like to find a seat. Um, welcome to this meeting of the Council. I'll start with some domestic arrangements for the meeting. Um, due to the regulations surrounding voting, only those members physically present are able to vote. However, if members dialing in via Teams would like to contribute to the debate, please use the raise hand function on your iPad. Although looking at the screen there, I'm not sure anybody is dialing in. I think just about everybody is here. So, um, If you use one of the communal microphones, please use the cleaning materials provided after you've used it. That's for members of the public seated uh, in the gallery. Mobile devices, please ensure that all electronic equipment is either on silent mode or switched off to minimise interruption. There are no planned fire alarms, so if it does sound, please leave via the emergency exits. And if I was uh, on a plane now, I'd be able to tell you where they are, but just follow whoever runs the fastest, I think. Uh, the meeting is being live streamed during open session for members of the public to watch. And if you'd like to speak, please press your microphone to let me know. And when I invite you to speak, your microphone will turn red. So, first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. Do we have any apologies? Uh, from Councillor Rains, Premier. Thank you. That takes us to item two on the agenda, which is the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, this item is for decision. So, can I please ask the Leader of the Council, Councillor Paul Foster, to propose that the minutes be approved? Is that seconded? Uh, we now need to take a vote on this. However, um, a number of you weren't even on the council last time. So those who were, if you would like to indicate that you approved the minutes. Right. Uh. Okay. Right, could I ask you all just to press your buttons once? Here we go. We've got 30 yeah. votes. Yeah. I think we can take it that those minutes are approved. Is that... Uh, that takes us to item three, which is declarations of interest. Do we have any declarations? Nope. In which case, that takes us to item four, which is the Mayor's announcements. Um, so if I can welcome everybody to the first business meeting of the municipal year, if I could congratulate all of those who've been re-elected following the local elections and take this opportunity to congratulate and welcome all of our new members to South Ribble Borough Council. Since the last council meeting on the 29th of March, I've attended various engagements and these have included the Mayor of Rossendale's charity ball in Whitworth, the Mayor of Burnley's Charity Ball at Burnley Football Club, the Mayor of Preston's Coronation Ball at the University of Central Lancashire, which is why I can't get in most of my suits, a civic tour of Ribble Valley, the official opening of Radio Leyland's new studio, the unveiling of a plaque at Leyland, Rayland, uh, Leyland Railway Station in remembrance of Councillor Albert Hocking, JP, who instigated all of the trees on Station Approach and Moss Lane around 1950. Um, and that is the father of Les Hocking, and we were pleased to meet uh, his family who had come from uh, various parts of, of the globe to actually uh, witness that ceremony taking place. I attended the Chorley and Leyland Lions Club presentation evening at Exton Parish Memorial Club and would like to thank them for their uh, donation to the Mayor's Charities. I attended the Autism Awareness Fun Day at St Mary's Community Centre um, I went to St. Teresa's Primary School in Penwitham to um, make awards for the Design Assign presentation. Um, I attended the 
Chairman of Lancashire County Council's King Charles III coronation celebrations and the informal gathering of outgoing mayors, mayoresses and consorts. Uh, last week, we attended a tour of the training facility and production plant at BA Systems in Salmsbury. And my final engagement this afternoon was attending the Mental Health Awareness Day at St Mary's Community Centre in Leyland. Um, and if I could point out, this week is Mental Awareness Week. Uh, and we had a variety um, of providers at that event this afternoon um, offering their services to those uh, who are in, in need of them. Um, as most of you will be aware, this is my last meeting that I'll be chairman as, chairing as Mayor of South Ribble, so behave. Um, as my year in office comes to an end, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for their support over the last year and say how I have thoroughly enjoyed my time as Mayor. The installation ceremony for the new incoming Mayor, Councillor Chris Lomax, will take place next Wednesday, the 24th of May at 6pm here at the Civic Centre. And I know he will be delighted to see as many of you here as possible. So if you could please contact the Mayoral Secretary, Louise Bamba, to inform her of whether you will uh, be attending. And that then takes us to item five, the returning officers report. If I could hand over to... Oh. Chris, would you like to present your report? The report's in the uh, pack. Congratulations to all members uh, who've been elected uh, last couple of weeks. I won't read out all the names. I feel like I did that a few weeks ago. Um, so the uh, councillors who were elected in the uh, elections held uh, a couple of weeks ago are set out on the agenda page 47 and 48. Uh, Councillor Foster. Thanks, Mayor. Um, if Carlsberg did election results, I think we'd all be behind that, Mayor. Thank you. Firstly, the congr public congratulations and thanks once again, Mayor, to the um, returning officer and the elections team, who it is the most challenging type of election. I'd actually argue an all-out um, local election is actually more challenging than a general election in the complexities. A uh, couple of other minor points I wish to raise just for the public record. Um, it is public record that South Ribble Borough Council issued to the Royal Mail all 17,000 postal votes. And the council is in the process of undertaking a review with Royal Mail to understand what the issues were that um, required us issuing a substantial number of additional um, elect uh, postal votes to our electorate. Um, and when we have that report, we will report that back to council in due course. I'm absolutely overwhelmed at the mandate that the residents of South Ribble have provided the Labour group. We campaigned hard, Mayor. We campaigned fairly. And we were honest in every statement that we made to our local communities. Our local communities trusted us and asked us to come back here and take this council forward for the next four years and deliver a number of initiatives. What I would say, finally, Mayor, and I've, I did write a small speech about this and I decided not to because I don't want to become too political at this early, very early point. There are a number of false statements that were made during the election, and I've already in the process of writing to the Electoral Commission because quite clearly electoral, electoral law isn't strong enough when false statements can be made to our public, which confuses our public and isn't permissible. Thank you, Mayor. Would you like to second that? Right, would anybody like to speak to this item on the agenda? Uh, Councillor, Councillor Phil Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, and um, um, I, I I'd also like to uh, congratulate uh, all members from all sides of this uh, council that have been elected for this uh, next four-year period. I think it's only right and proper that we uh, we acknowledge that. And um, whilst it uh, it's painful to sit here and see it, um, I'm sure that we'll uh, we'll see how we go over the next next four years. But uh, congratulations to everybody. Hard work starts now. Um, this might not be as easy as you think it is, but uh, I'm sure the council will look after you and the, your, the members will uh, look after our new members and make sure they uh, uh, know 
the appropriate action attachments that we need to take and, uh, and attend the appropriate uh, training sessions that they need to take to uh, to take this council seriously and, and to take it forward. Um, with regard to your comment, uh, um, Paul, I'll call you Paul for a minute. Um, yeah. About, about more it's more challenging these elections than a parliamentary one it quite obviously is it's it's very easy when you've got one candidate rather than 50 candidates and it's uh, it's a much easier process to press to uh, to manage with regard to the postal votes obviously it caused quite a major trauma part way through the election and it was a major trauma with the amount of phone calls that were going on emails that were flooding in all over the place um, and I'm sure that at uh, some stage and we've obviously spoken to the chief executive about that and our understanding of it I think at this stage is the same as your understanding of it so uh, it'll make its way forward at some stage and we'll get a report at, at council. Um, so I, I don't think of anything else more to add on that. Um, <clears throat> you, you made comments about a, <clears throat> a number of false statements, and you're quite right. There were a number of false statements. So I'll leave it at that for the time being. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right, is there anybody else who wishes to speak to this item? No, in which case um, can we note this? Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Pillinger. Um, this may not be the right place, but I wonder if the return... Sorry, office... Councillor, could you stand, please? I'm sorry, my apologies. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if this is the right place to ask, but the uh, does the returning officer have any indication of how many people were turned away from election as a result of what Jacob Rees-Mogg has recently called gerrymandering, that is, the, uh, the ID... Um, re re uh, legislation. Uh, there will be a report coming back to Council, I presume, on all of the outcome of the elections, because uh, I think there are quite a number of answers that we're all looking for on that. Uh, the answer to that question could be one of them. Anybody else wish to speak? In which case, if we can note that report and note uh, those who have been elected. And that takes us to item six, which is the election of the leader of the council. Um, can I have a proposer, please? Um, I'm just wondering about the standing of the rest of the items on this evening's agenda. Um, because if, you're, if I refer you to the council procedure rules, the standing orders of the council, uh, part 4A, Section 1 sets out the, the rules for an annual meeting of the Council. Section 1-2, the first business meeting of the municipal year, which lists the items, which essentially are, are the items that are, are before us on the agenda for, for, for tonight's Council meeting. However, at the top of Section 1-2, it states, at the first business meeting of the mu municipal year, after the mural installation, members will, and then it lists all the items. As clearly the, the new mural installation has not taken place until next week, I wonder about the legal standing of the rest of the items on this evening's agenda and would we'll seek advice from you, please, um, as the Mayor of this Borough Council. Thank you. Well, I'm sure that you don't really wish us all to go home, but I will seek advice um, from the officers to my right. second right we are all here for an annual business meeting um it's probably unfortunate that we may have done this back to front however i propose could i ask for a proposal to waive standing orders to enable us to continue is that seconded seconded in which case could you all indicate on the buttons in front of you, whether you wish to waive standing orders and proceed.
Right, of those who are not highlighted on that list, is there anybody opposed? In which case I take that as moved and we will proceed with the meeting as set out. So I now move to item six again, which is the election of the leader of the council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like and to again, Councillor Flannery, could you stand, oh. please? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was going to propose and ask that I stand after, but can I do my short intro now without the second? Thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> well, everyone, this is a moment in time, an historical event in modern local politics for the borough of South Ribble. On the back of an election campaign, which returned 29 of the 50 council, council seats to a Labour majority, for the first time since 1995. Councillor Paul Foster led from the front. He also pushed from behind. He must have appeared on every campaign selfie that was taken, which is quite a task when you consider that Matthews Tomlinson was also in the room. <laughs> but on a serious note, which is a serious business, particularly with the new councillors, Councillor Foster, I've worked with him for the past year on the cabinet and he's never once asked for anything which he wouldn't do himself, which is a good, real quality and a leader. Therefore, Mr. Mayor, I am proud to be invited to formally propose, propose that Councillor Paul Andrew Foster be the leader of South Ribble Borough Council on the 17th of May 2023. Thank you. I didn't know his middle name was Andrew. You learn something every day, don't you? Uh, do we have a seconder? I would like to. Is it all right if I sit down? I was making the assumption you were going to because Thank I do. You. No. I do appreciate because it makes uh, it twenty minutes for me to stand up. Indeed, I do no. appreciate that. And I've actually written in my little notes. I rise. <laughs> I rise metaphorically to second Councillor Paul Foster as leader of this council. Now, I've not always agreed with his decisions, but he knows that. But the last four years have been horrendous for all of us. The world came to a standstill. And right at the beginning of the pandemic, Paul's mother died, but he carried on. This council, under his leadership, rose to the challenge. We supported our community. We fed them. We walked their dogs. We collected their prescriptions. We supported businesses. And even those of us who were imprisoned at home had welfare calls to make to our more vulnerable residents. Priorities. We got them right. Some years ago, when we were in opposition, I remember a discussion, a debate about brown bins, and it went on for 40 minutes. The next thing on the agenda was the homeless review, and I was appalled that not one councillor made a comment or asked a question about it. And at the time, I remember saying it was time we got our priorities right. Under Councillor Paul Foster's leadership for the past four years, and this is why I am seconding this, we did get our priorities right. Thank you, Mr. Baird. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak to this item? No, in which case it is for decision. So if you could indicate by your voting buttons whether you're for, against or abstain.
Right, we're nearly there. We're down to, um, I think, one person now whose vote isn't being recorded, but that is very much carried. So. Which takes us to item seven, the appointment of That's the first round of applause I've received for getting the vote right. <laughs> uh, so that takes us to item seven, the appointment of deputy leader and members of the cabinet. Uh, if I could ask the leader of the council to present his report. Thank you, <coughs> Mayor. I think the Conservative group's in for a long four years, Mayor. Um, it's my privilege to announce the cabinet, Mayor. Um, we've got an exceptionally gifted Labour group, a very diverse Labour group, and a very talented Labour group. The first portfolio will be my own, Mayor, Policy Reform Comms. The second portfolio of Property, Assets, Commercial Services and Major Developments and the Deputy Leader of the Council will be Councillor Aniela Bilinski gelder the portfolio of finance and public protection will be that of councillor Matthew Tomlinson. The portfolio of neighbourhood and waste services will be councillor Deborah Ashton. The portfolio of customer services and digital will be councillor Ian Watkinson. The portfolio of planning, business support and economic development will be councillor James Flannery. The portfolio for wealth building, social justice, equality and diversity will be councillor Jackie Alty. And last but not least, the portfolio for communities, leisure and wellbeing will be councillor Claire Hunter. Mayor, the lead members, there's one amendment here, if I may. The, there will be a lead member for climate change, not a member champion. So the lead member for climate change will be Councillor Keith Martin. The lead member for young people will be Councillor Kath Unsworth. The lead member for member development, welfare and mental health will be Councillor Lou Jackson. And the lead member for social justice and equality will be Councillor Paul Wharton Hardman. Our safeguarding and older people champion will be Councillor Jane Bell. And our armed forces champion will be Councillor Matthew Farmworth. And I commend these appointments to council. Thank you. That seconded. Seconded. Does anybody wish to speak to this item? No, that's uh, noted. In which case, can we now move to item eight appointments to committees, panels, and working groups? for 2023-24. Uh, can I ask the Leader of the Council to present his report? Thanks, Mayor. I will just name, if that's permissible, the Chairs and the Vice-Chairs of the various committees of the Mayor, 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 Mayor quickly. Um, appeals, it'll be, sorry, there's no Chair on Appeals. Appointment and Appointment Panel is there as well. So then we've introduced a new Corporate Performance and Budget Scrutiny Committee. That will be chaired by Councillor Will Adams and Councillor Michael Green is the Conservative nomination as the Vice Chair. Councillor, um, the, there's then a, sorry, a, a Community and External Scrutiny Committee. Councillor uh, Turner will be chairing that and Councillor Lou Jackson is the Vice Chair. Um, the Governance Committee Mayor will be chaired by Councillor Colin Sharples and the Vice Chair will be Councillor Wes Roberts. The Licensing and Public Safety Committee will be Councillor Jane Bell as the Chair and Councillor Paul Wharton Hardman will be the Vice Chair. The Planning Committee will stay under the great stewardship of Councillor uh, Caleb Tomlinson and Councillor Elaine Stringbill Stringfellow will be the Vice Chair. Um, Councillor Kath Unsworth will be the Chair of the Standards Committee with Councillor John Rainsbury as the Vice Chair. On the working groups and panels, Councillor Keith Martin will continue to chair the Climate Emergency Working Group. Councillor Lou Jackson will take on the responsibility for the Member Development Steering Group. 
and I believe that it that is it there. Thank you. Uh, again, is that seconded? Seconded. Could I invite Councillor Turner to fill in the blanks uh, on the report that's been presented? So, uh, as group leader, we have Councillor David Howarth, Deputy Group Leader, Councillor Angela Turner, Governance, Councillor Angela Turner, with substitutes. Sorry, it, yeah, can we have the substitutes, because all of the other nominations right, okay. have actually been submitted. So. Okay, sorry. The following substitutes are Governance, uh, Councillor Dave Shaw and Councillor David Howarth, Licensing, Councillor James Lillis, Councillor David Howarth. Planning, Councillor Ange Turner, Councillor Harry Hancock. And Standards, Councillor Dave Shaw, Councillor Ange Turner. Thank you. Uh, would anybody else like to speak to this item? No, in which case um, this is for decision. So, oh. Uh, if I can take Councillor Karen Walton first. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I noticed on on the uh, Appendix 1 for Licensing and Public Safety Committee, there are no substitutes listed on the list. So from who? From uh, the, the Labour group or the Conservative group. And I did send substitutes in, so they have been missed out. Right. Would you like to nominate your to your substitutes? Then? Yes. Yeah. I, I I sent them through. It is um, Sean Rainsbury and Connor Watson. Okay. If that can be noted, and from the Labour Group. <coughs> <coughs> the list. I haven't got it with me. I don't know if Darren can quickly update us, or it can be sent to to Council. The two substitutes. Right, with all of those emissions now presumably filled in on the list of members and substitutes, um, is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Councillor Phil Smith. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, Mr Mayor, um, it's just my concern about the uh, local plan working group, which seems to have been sort of shelved for the time being. Um, <laughs> It, uh, it's an important working group, as we know, um, and whilst there are lots of changes going on at, at all levels within planning, um, I think it's very remiss of that working group not to meet on a, an even more regular basis, so at least all uh, members are up to speed with that. Um, and, uh, I believe that it's being looked at in some detail, but um, I, I would also make a request on that. And if it's being looked at in detail, I would like to be involved in that. I've been involved in that working group for a long, long time. Uh, I'm often uh, the only person that speaks at any detail at that meeting itself. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, man. Thanks for the points, Councillor Smith. The, I think the, well, there's a few issues with the local plan working group. One of which was highlighted in your leaflets that said that seven thousand homes have been approved by this council through the uh, the decision that was made to go out to consultation, and that concerns us that members of the Conservative group on the local plan working group were understanding that nothing had been approved. All that we had done is um, sent out some options to. Um, to the public to consult upon. So Councillor James Flannery has undertaken to do undertaken, sorry, to do detailed review into the membership of the working group and it will be coming back, Mayor, to Council at the next council meeting after the mayor installation and it is not being shelved, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak to this item? Uh, sorry, Councillor Smith, you've already spoken.
Anybody else on council wishes to speak? No, in which case, Mr. Forrest. As former chair of the Watchdog External Scrutiny Committee, I welcome the return of external scrutiny to the council. And could I suggest that the first uh, gaze cast by the chair of that committee should be to the Rivers Trust website and the level of sewage discharge that is happening uh, into our rivers and brooks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you for those comments, because it is a website I visited and studied in, in great detail, and it is quite alarming. Um, right, we now need a decision. So again, uh, we've had the appointments of committees, panels and working groups. Could you indicate whether you're for, against or abstain? At last, we have a full house and everybody is in favour. So if we can now move on to item nine, which is the appointment of community hub chairs and vice chairs for 2023-24. Uh, this is an item for decision. They are all listed there with the exception of the vice chair uh, for the Penwitham community hub. And the nomination is me. So if you can just add my name to the to the blank uh, on that list. Um, Councillor Foster, would you like to present the report? Just very briefly, Mayor, because I think it's only right and proper, we should just um, name the chairs of the community hubs. Leyland and Farrington is Councillor Colin Sharples. Penwitham is Councillor Will Adams. Western Parishes is Councillor Margaret Smith. Eastern Parishes is Councillor Peter Molino. And Bamber Bridge, Lostock Hall and Walton Dale is Councillor Leslie Pritchard. Thank you. Uh, is that seconded? Seconded. Thank you. Does anybody wish to speak to this item? In which case, um, that again is an item for decision. If you could indicate uh, whether you're for, against or abstain. Again, that's unanimously carried, which takes us on to item 10, the appointment to outside bodies for 2023-24. Uh, if I could ask the leader of the council, Council Paul Foster, to present the report. Thanks, Mayor. You'd be glad to know I made a strategic decision not to read them all out, but they're presented in the papers. Thank you. <laughs> Is that seconded? Seconded. Thank you. Does anybody wish to speak to this item? Uh, Councillor Karen Walton. Bring to your attention the Lancashire Police and Crime panel, uh, which I was elect uh, was voted on um, um, or sometime last year uh, as a Conservative member. I haven't had any reason or been told that I cannot stand sit on that panel. Uh, as a Conservative member until that panel has, I, I presumed, at its annual general meeting and I'm not required anymore. So could my name be still included on this or is it just going to be Councillor Flannery? Thank you. The leader has indicated he wishes to come back. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. It's my understanding that the AGM of the panel will be quite soon and the, the take the membership in Pan Lancashire on the local election results and they will then write to us again and ask if there's an additional nomination required, which we don't think will happen, but it's possible, uh, Councillor Walton. My understanding is, is that you're still appointed to it, 
Um, anyway, we're ha I'm happy for the record to be corrected, Mayor, but you're still appointed on there until we bring back to council, probably in June, if there's any additional nominations, but we have no problem with what's been mentioned. Right, with that amendment to that list then, uh, does anybody else wish to speak? No, in which case, if we again can move to the vote, this item is for decision. So if you'd like to indicate for, against or abstain. And again, that is carried unanimously. So that now takes us to item 11, uh, the council meetings for 23-24. Um, the dates are set out there. Um, could I have a proposal? And a seconder. Does anybody wish to speak to this? Uh, Councillor Phil Smith. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm happy to uh, um, to note that these have not changed since the ones that were proposed at the council meeting. So uh, uh, my diaries will still be correct. Thank you, Chair. Anybody else wish to speak? In which case, those are noted. That takes us to item 12 which is the report of the Scrutiny Review Task Group. And if I could call on, actually, I think I'm going to call on Councillor Michael Green because uh, I think you led this one. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, it, it was my uh, privilege to actually chair um, this uh, Scrutiny Review for the benefit of the, of the new members or, or, or indeed members who've been around for many years but may not have may not have actually served on the scrutiny committee. Scrutiny has a wonderful role that it can play cross-party uh, to actually look at issues and, and to make some recommendations on, on how we can improve either internally as a council or externally or working with partners, etc. And scrutiny does play that real role, uh, that, that role of being a critical friend at times, uh, but in a constructive way. And this review was a, a wonderful example of that. So I'd like to begin uh, by thanking my fellow task group members, Councillor Karen Walton, Councillor Kath Unsworth, and Councillor Lou Jackson. Um, all three of them, with myself, uh, spent many, many hours um, toying with evidence, looking at reports, interviewing witnesses. Um, and it would be remiss of me not to thank our wonderful Democratic Services team, in particular Darren Cranshaw and Coral Asprey, who supported that review throughout. Um, and without uh, their assistance, it would not have been possible to do the amount of work that we actually did in a relatively short space of time. I would also like to thank all the witnesses. Those were some, some elected members who came and gave, gave us evidence and also some, some elected members who actually filled in surveys and came to meetings at the end of the process just to almost sense check um, what we'd actually, uh, what we were minded at that time to actually recommend um, and gave us their perspectives as well. So, so thank you to each and every one of you who did that. And thank you to all our officers, both within South Fibble and externally um, to, to South Fibble, who gave up their time and added some great value to, to the report, ultimately, which we were able to produce. It's worth noting that a number of those officers were members of the planning team here at South Fibble, and, and many of them are names that are no longer here um, within the planning department. That's probably a discussion for another day, but that was notable when I was looking back through the report. So colleagues, what was the basis for the review? Well, clearly, year on year, we are building more houses in South Fibble. And there's, there's been a reference already to, to the next local plan. We, we can argue all day about what, what numbers that will see, see developed, but there's absolutely no doubt it will see thousands of houses developed in South Fibble over the lifetime of the new local plan. But to me and to my fellow task group members, houses are not just buildings. They are not just bricks and mortar. They, they are homes where people live, where they bring their families up, where they spend their social time, their free time, they bring their friends around, etc. 
and they play such a massive role in terms of well-being and health of our community. So we feel that that, that was paramount in our considerations. And we wish to consider the impact of all these houses that we have built in the past and that we will build in the future. What is the impact that they have on our communities across South Ibble, the towns and villages which make up our beautiful borough? And on the basis of that, we've, we've come up with a series of recommendations. They're all there in the report. If, if colleagues haven't had a chance yet to read the report, I, I would urge you to do so. It's a succinct report, and that was deliberately done that way to encourage people to actually read through it uh, and have a look at it. So do have a look at the recommendations. But we feel that if those recommendations are ultimately adopted, accepted by the Cabinet and, the, and in due course by the full council, that they will help to reduce the impact upon the residents of South Ribble. And it will lead to better homes and a better standard of living for all residents, which is what we're all keen to achieve. I'm not going to go through those recommendations in, in detail. You'll be pleased to hear. But I just want to highlight one key recommendation. And that key recommendation is so, something which we came back to time and time again as we were looking at the various issues. And that was we are recommending that the council adopts a charter accreditation scheme for developers. And the, the real purpose behind that is to actually promote a higher standard for, for homes moving forwards, whether that's in design, in styles, in densities, etc. And we just feel that if we can encourage developers to, a, to apply for this scheme, and it will almost generate a bit of a race towards the top rather than a race to the bottom. So let's have that race to the top of better standards for, for the residents of South Ibble. And if we can achieve that, along with some of the other recommendations, I will be proud of, of the work we did. Councillor Unsworth will, Councillor Walton will and Councillor Jackson will. So I'll leave my comments there, um, but I look forward to the debate. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for that? Uh, right, Councillor Walton has seconded that. Um, does anybody wish to speak to this or speak to the contents of the report? No, um, in which uh, Councillor Phil Smith. Councillor Phil Smith first. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, Chair, I keep saying Chair, Mr. Mayor. I'll get used to it. Um, the Charter is a is an interesting concept. Um, mm -hmm. At uh, many of these planning meetings, as uh, some members might uh, might recall, over the last uh, few years, I've been mentioning about the quality of the the, the housing, um, and in in relation to um, climate change and the emergency climate uh, uh, work that is going on in this council, um, and. I suggested that we actually have a, had a local bylaw, to, a bylaw to deal with it. We're building hundreds and hundreds of houses, thousands, without any PVs on the roof. Now, to me, that does not make any sense whatsoever. Um, as, a, as, a, as a fit in building a house, the cost is minimal. As a retrofit, which obviously never gets done later, um, it's it's a very very expensive concept. Um, so maybe something like that in the charter, uh, as opposed to a bylaw. Uh, I'm not sure which carries more, more weight, but um, I think it would be a, a certainly a way forward. If you're driving from where we drive now in in New Longton, drive on the way to 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 Leyland through through Farrington. There, there's hardly a house there. They're still putting them up, and there's nothing on the roofs. It just does not make any sense. Thank you, M Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Flannery. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick response. I don't want to go into too, too much debate too early uh, in the season. Um, part of the building regulations was introduced last year, which comes into effect this year. And then that will deal with a lot of the sustainability issues Councillor Smith referred to. So part of the building regulations are a national requirement, which so they improve sustainability and performance of all house building is a requirement for part of the building regs, which costs a little bit more to do, but that is a national requirement. 
And that's what we will be doing moving forward on any, not just us, anyone who builds houses will have to comply with. So thank you. Just one last thing, sorry, on the council agreements mention of the charter. I've worked, when I worked on the regen schemes in Liverpool, the pool one, city centre movement strategy, the new arena. Now, obviously, I gave evidence to the task group, so well done to the team on that. Um, so I think we did discuss this. The charters are, are well-meaning, but they don't have any teeth, but they are well-meaning. So, as Council Green said, it's an ambition to do that. And it's good to send the message out when anyone develops, develops in South Ribble, but when it comes to legal requirements, it's the building regulations and the plan. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of Council wish to speak? No, in which case, Mr Forrest. Mr Mayor, um, could I commend the members of that uh, committee? It's an excellent and succinct report, which is uh, something really to be praised. Um, very easy to read if members haven't read it already. Um, one thing I could suggest that perhaps should be included in the uh, recommendations is waste bins for litter and for dog poo. Um, it's astonishing if you walk across the borough, you will see that all the old areas have bins at every other street virtually, but any new development has nothing. And uh, it's a, a singularly lacking in, in development that we don't make provision for bins to exist. The other thing um, I was interested to see, Councillor Green, was that uh, you drawn attention to the fact that um, parished areas can collect 15% or even 25% of sill. Um, you suggest that perhaps hubs um, would be uh, able to receive that, but I think that would need a change of legislation, would it not? Um, my question to you, Councillor Green, is do you think that the provision for, well, the ability to receive sill um, is justification for areas such as Leyland and Bamber Bridge being parished so as to be able to benefit from the 15 or even 20%, uh, 25% of sill? Um, I think we might be straying into other territory now. I'm, I'm not sure it's for Councillor Green um, who led the scrutiny review to actually answer questions on whether the whole of the uh, borough should be parished or not. Um, but if the Cabinet would like to consider that, along with the other points that have been raised, um, along with the uh, proposals within the, the uh, re review, then I think that would probably be welcome. Um, anybody else wish to speak to this item? In which case it is for note, um, and the Cabinet will consider the proposals for implementation. That takes us to item 13, the protocol, protocol on creating honorary aldermen. Um, and if I could ask the Leader of the Council to present. Thanks, Mayor. This is something that the my previous administration started to look at. And unfortunately, with the pandemic and other clear priorities that we had as a council, we decided to, to move it back to the to, to now. And it's something that I think is really important um, for us as an authority. Most authorities in Lancashire and the North West and England have the title of Honorary Alderman. And I think it's something, and for those that were present at the last meeting of the previous um, council before the elections just small gratitude of certificates of service mayor were really well received by so many members that give up so much time and effort to serve their local communities briefly because it's all laid out in the report for you you mayor um to confer the title of honorary alderman um it's persons who have in the opinion of the council rendered eminent service to the council as past members of that council but who are no, no longer members of the council. The position of honorary alderman is non-political. There must be support for the nomination by not less than two thirds of the members voting at the extraordinary meeting of the council. Nominations for aldermen can be made by any serving member of the council, setting out the reasons for the nomination and will be usually considered following each four year term of the council. And this is important. It is the 
view of the administration that if council adopts this policy, that this is only ever confirmed, confirmed probably com conferred at the beginning of every new administration every four years. Um, nominations will then be considered by a civic task group made up of the mayor, the leaders of each of the political groups, and will be chaired by the leader of the council. The qualification criteria is important, Mayor. The uh, Honorary Alderman must have made significant contribution to public life, rendered eminent service to the council, must be a former member who should have served a minimum of 16 years service on the council, which does not, however, have to be consecutive, and finally is no longer seeking um, election to the council. I'm hoping, Mayor, colleagues, this is something that is non-political, it's something we can all get behind, and if that's the case, it would be my intention to bring the to seek nomination straight away and for us to confer our first honorary alderman in the summer. Thank you, colleagues. That's seconded. Uh, does anybody wish to speak to this item? Councillor Karen Walton. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, we were rel we welcome this and like you said, Councillor Foster, the number of people at the last meeting who have given up years and years and years of their lives for service to this council should be honoured. So, um, we are, this is a very important protocol for comparing the title of honorary alderman on former members of this council in recognition of that service. And we will be supporting this recommendation and I look forward to working on the task group. Thank you. Councillor Michael Green. Uh, thank you, Mr Major. Just briefly, um, I similarly support the protocol. Um, I think it's a, an excellent idea. We, we've had a lot of predecessors who've given many, many years of service to this borough and charities and different organisations within the borough as, uh, as well. Um, and I think it's, it's right that that is recognised in some formal manner. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Anybody else wish to speak to this item? No, in which case you can go to the uh, Mr. Forrest. Um, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, perhaps I should declare an interest, even if only on basis of length of service, I may qualify for that. Um, I, I'm not making any other suggestion. Um, the, un the only thing is looking through the draft of the item um, was the fact that um, it was that it actually stated that the that the honorary alderman should not be in a position to influence the council um that seems to me a bit counterproductive because one of the reasons surely to have honorary alderman is to take advantage of the years of experience that these particular people will have and the contribution they can make to the council and to the debate and to actually have it set out that they wouldn't be able to influence would I presume mean that you're not able to speak to council uh, and uh, because that surely would amount, be amount to an item of influence. So perhaps when, when you're looking at the drafting of that particular uh, protocol, perhaps you should uh, reconsider that particular line. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Some of us aren't actually in favour at all, but uh, Councillor Foster. Um, thanks, Mayor. It, just briefly, um, um, just say Councillor Forrest and uh, Derek, it, this is very much governed by statute and law, and um, much of the most of the information that's contained within the report is is legislation. However, we will take another look at that, and clearly, if the alderman wished to state something at a council meeting, I cannot see any reason at all why they're not permitted to do so. But we'll take another look with the monitoring officer. But we are governed by statutes, but it's then how we manage that process through our meetings, because clearly aldermen are experienced members of the council and of the community and may wish to feed into a debate. Perhaps ask a question on every single motion. <laughs> <laughs> right, do we have any other contributions to this item? No, in which case, if we can move to the vote, because uh, it is for decision. So if you can indicate whether you're for, against or abstain.
For some reason, Councillor Molyneux isn't coming up. So. It clearly is carried, so um, and we can make that forty four if that's your if that was your intention. Yeah. That then takes us to item. 14, which is the policy review, discretionary council tax reductions policy. Uh, if I could invite Councillor Annie Belinsky Gelder to present the report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is the council tax discretionary reductions policy, and given the current cost of living crisis, um, the Labour Group felt this policy needed reviewing. The officers have done a fantastic job, and I'd like to thank them for making the report on the policy more user-friendly, accessible um, for both the staff and the residents. Um, it's really important um, in South Ribble because there's a hint that a likely increase in applications for the discretionary reductions. Although this is occurring more in Chorley, um, we need to still take it into consideration in South Ribble. We need to be in the best position to support people. And for the record, our council tax recovery in South Ribble is good and it is currently better than previous years. In the last financial period, only one person applied for this hardship funding. This could be considered a positive for South Ribble or a negative in that we were offering the provision in an unaccessible way. The policy has been reduced to two pages from over 50 and ties in with our new Fair Tax Charter, which was introduced in the last administration. The terminology has been made more user friendly. Um, I just do want to hint towards the Fair Tax Charter. It's extremely comprehensive and allows us to support residents which are struggling to pay and demonstrates our commitment to upholding our promise of being a compassionate council. The Fair Tax Charter ensures that South Ribble Borough Council has provided every opportunity to support residents to keep up to date on their payments. In terms of the funding, there is no external government funding for us to provide this hardship fund. It is funded from South Ribble Borough Council and therefore officers have proposed that we review this policy in six months to establish its effectiveness and determine the budget reserves after that initial six months. I'd support this position in the initial implementation of this policy. If the policy is agreed at full council this evening, the relevant staff in the gateway and the council tax recovery will be briefed on the policy and ensure it is implemented for the benefit of our residents. Therefore, I propose to council to approve the revised council tax discretionary reductions policy and in view of the economic climate and the likely increase in applications, the financial position in respect of the discretionary reductions is reviewed after six months. Thank you, Mr Mayor. That's seconded. Uh, anybody wish to speak to this item? Councillor Karen Walton. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, again, I would like to thank the officers uh, for all the hard work in, in condensing this policy. Uh, and we welcome any updating and um, the, setting out the guidelines and criteria to make it easier for officers and for um, members of the, of the uh, borough to uh, apply for this scheme. Uh, and it is an important government policy which we have to uh, we need to implement in South Ribble uh, to the benefit of all residents of the borough. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? No, in which case um, this is an item for decision. So again, if you could use your buttons to vote for, against or abstain.
we now have a unanimous decision on that um, and that takes us on to item 15 the council's capital program and with the growth play area uh, this is an item for decision and if i could ask councillor matthew tomlinson to present the report thank you um gosh that's is that loud is that better um, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I'm pleased to uh, present this report um, for new members. Uh, just an explanation of why this one particular item is being brought to full council. Um, the council agrees its budget and its capital programme at our budget meeting in February. And any divergence from that that's going to cost the council more than £100,000, we have to come to council and everybody has uh, to well not everybody a majority have to agree to spend that money um certainly um local members from Walterdale and bamber bridge will know where the grove play area really well it's a play area of strategic importance people come from not just across south ribble but from across lancashire uh, to enjoy the facilities at with grove play area unfortunately um last year it was the subject of some severe vandalism which resulted in a major uh, piece of equipment in the uh, play area having to be decommissioned altogether. Um, we've been out uh, to have a look at how we can best replace this. We've got some uh, quotes. Uh, if you read the report in full, you'll see there is some reassurance for members that the new equipment will be more resilient uh, and more um, capable of withstanding the best efforts of people to uh, spoil it. Um, but it is going to cost us a considerable amount of money. I am now asking council to approve uh, the spend of £110,000 with the great news that apart from £100, it is fully insured. So we will get all that money back, but we do need to spend it uh, in the first place. Um, and so basically tonight I'm asking council to approve that variation from the capital programme uh, that we agreed in February. Uh, in the sure and certain knowledge that the money will come flowing back into our coffers at a later date. And I'm happy to move the report. Thank you. Is that seconded? Anybody wish to speak to this item? Councillor Phil Smith. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chair. Obviously, we'll be supporting this. It sounds like a more than a, a short-term loan or even a medium-term loan, depending on the, uh, the the insurance company. Having dealing with one at the moment, it could very well be a long-term loan. Thank you, Chair. Anybody else wish to speak to this? No, in which case it is an item for decision. So again, if you could use your buttons accordingly. That is carried unanimously, which takes us to item 16, changes to the director structure. And if I could ask the leader of the council to present the report. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Uh, the report seeks uh, approval to consult on changes to the council's director structure to ensure that it remains fit for purpose. The key change is to delete the vacant posts of the Director of Planning and Development, Director of Commercial Services and Strategic Lead for Future Developments. These posts are all shared with Chorley Borough Council and the proposal is to create a shared director, property and planning. The report sets out the considerations in formulating the proposals made, which includes the ensuring that it recognises the need that our, that our director structure matches our priorities, balanced against the benefits of stability in the management team. Uh, if approved, the proposals will be made available for consultation in line with the Council's change policy, subject to any changes after that consultation being minor in nature, Mayor, the final sign-off will be given to himself as the Council leader. Thank you. That seconded. Thank you. Does anybody wish to speak to this item? Councillor Phil Smith. 
Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would call you Mr. Mayor this time. Um, I've got a couple of queries on on this, um, and it's regard to the structure and um, the portfolios. And we've only just picked this up about five minutes before the meeting, so you might just have to excuse me. Uh, but with regard to the the directorates and and how that directorates working within the the portfolio. Um, it seems to me that we're looking at the, um, the one of the um, uh, the head of economic growth, which is going through a directorate of change and delivery, um, would be more fitting if you read the um, <clears throat> the responsibilities within the portfolio, uh, and it would be quite normal for, for it to be actually within the director of property and planning. Um, planning for growth and planning to grow um, is, is certainly something economic development, if you like. Um, from my point of view, uh, it should be within that area. Um, so that's just a, a query on that. Um, the other thing I have a, a, a problem with, uh, and again, it, it's with regard to the issues on planning. Um, to be quite honest, in, in South Ribble and um, not about other areas, we have plenty of issues with, within the planning department have, and have had for some while. Um, and whilst this uh, director of property and planning is, is, is a shared post, um, I, I would like to propose that we have our own director of planning. I think it's really, really important at the moment that we have that. And I realise there could very well be another cost to go along with it. Um, but for me, it is probably a cost that's um, worth uh, absorbing with it within the, the council um, because we really do need have to look at the, the various changes within planning nationally, locally and regionally. Um, and to me, that, that would be something that I would recommend, Chair. <clears throat> Sorry, is that a recommendation or is that a proposal? Well, I was hoping there might be some debate on it, but I will propose that we make that change, yes. Right, OK. Do we have a seconder for that? Thank you. Uh, that then is an amendment to the report as presented. So I will now throw the amendment open to debate. Councillor Foster. This is really frustrating, Mayor, really frustrating. This is the Chief Executive's proposal for the structure of the local authority it's gone through much diligence the some of the statements that you've just made there councillor phil smith are just not substantiated in any way i'm not aware of a raft of issues in our planning department nor is the chair of planning nor is the um the cabinet respons responsible for the planning department additionally members that have been on this council for a few months will realize we have just appointed a brand new post in our council only of, head, of the head of planning and enforcement. We've already added additional resource to our planning team in the last six to 12 months. That is in place already. And we did that to support our planning environment. The, the direct, we will still then have, as we've had for the last two or three years, Chris, the shared director of planning. However, we are incorporating the issues of, the, of property as well. There's a real challenge out in the labour market at the moment, particularly within planning officers, to bring in directors of planning. And we've looked at it in this great detail with the chief exec and his team. And there is a wider offering of talent when you bolt on planning and property. And they are very much separate, but also linked. The I, I just cannot agree there to um, amendments to the chief executive's structure on the hoof at a council meeting that haven't been debated and i would recommend if we may if we go straight to the vote on the amendment and then discuss and vote on the substantive offering that we have in front of us and just on the other point that was raised by councillor smith about the head of economic growth being within the director of change and delivery that's vicky's team and vicky's team already do a huge amount of work with councillor Fannery 
and his team heading up, guess what? Economic growth. So that's absolutely in the right place. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councillor Karen Walton. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I, I didn't want to speak on, on the... OK, that's now been seconded, uh, in which case we need to take a vote as to whether we move to the vote on the amendment. So if you could indicate accordingly... To the vote. Right, well, moving to the vote is carried. Um, that is the... Well, <laughs> yes, we now... Yeah. Right, we now need to take a vote on the amendment. So again, if you could indicate whether you're for, against or abstain on the amendment. I was never submitted in writing anyway, so. Right, the amendment was to have a single director of planning for South Ribble, not a shared service. Right, that amendment is lost, in which case if we can return to the debate on the recommendations as put, does anybody else wish to speak? As Councillor Foster said, this issue to me hasn't been debated properly. It should have been it should have come to the shared services joint committee so that ration, the rationale behind the changes could have been discussed before bringing the new structure um, in, into council. It seems it's a decision of the chief executive and the two leaders that this has been brought here today and I'm sorry this isn't good enough for something that's going to impact on the shared services and on this council and on Chorley Borough Council to me, it should have been debated at the Shared Services Joint Committee and had a full debate on it. As you said, Councillor Foster, it should have been debated fully before it was brought here today. So, um, unfortunately, we won't be supporting this today. Uh, Councillor Foster. Thanks. Uh, I understood we were debating it now in full because... The, you may have noticed, and I'm, I'm also aware, uh, Councillor Walton, that you've had detailed briefings off the Chief Executive one-to-one -one on this in some detail as well, separately. And you'll also notice, Councillor Walton, from the report that we're holding vacancies in the Deputy Chief Executive post, the Strategic Land Future Investments, the Director of Commercial Services and the Director of Planning and Development. We're currently holding those vacancies. So it's an opportune moment for the Chief Executive to review um, review the structure and it is only minor modifications that we're looking to make here 
and make it fit for purpose with the strategic priorities of the authority. Now, the problem is, what would have happened if we took it to shared services would have just added a three month delay at a time when we desperately need senior da directors in this authority to drive us forward. And what would have happened is what's happened in the past is you'd have supported it at Shared Services Council, Walton, and then voted against it here, which you've done previously. So what we're saying here, the report is detailed. The rationale for doing this is there. Council has recently put a huge investment in bringing in heads of service in South Ribble across the board where we're already seeing improvements. So I know you keep saying it's too fast and you'd rather not do anything. But that's not how this administration works. We've got lots of business to do, huge amount of strategic work to do on some massive schemes within the borough. And we need to get on with it and get these people in place as quickly as possible. Because you'll also note in the report that we're going to quickly get out there as well and bring in the uh, deputy chief executive as well, which is another position we need to look to fill as quickly as we can. So I commend this report to council. Let's get on with it. Thank you. Anybody else wishes to speak? No, in which case this is an item for decision. So if we could move to the vote uh, again, if you can use your buttons accordingly. Uh, that is carried. So that therefore takes us to a blank page. Is that in for me? Apparently, I can add lib now. Um, so thank you for your attendance. Thank you for not making my um, final meeting uh, as as chair uh, arduous. I think you've all behaved wonderfully well, and may I wish you. Uh, a wonderful rest of your evening and safe journey home. Thank you.